from MTN, the Montana Television Network. This is Face the State. Welcome to this week's Face the State. I'm KRTV's Margaret DeMarco. This week's topic is about the Montana Air National Guard. On October 1st, 2016, the 120th Airlift Wing completed a two-year-long process of changing their mission from a fighter wing to an airlift wing. Through the duration of the conversion process, the airmen not only retrained, but they also built new hangars to be able to work on the C-130s. They have also started using a drop zone called Charging Charlie on Maelstrom Air Force Base and are actively looking for other opportunities for drop zones in the local area. They also started working on an unimproved assault airstrip. A few short weeks after the conversion process was over, the 120th Airlift Wing left on their first large-scale mission in March. They welcomed home dozens of guardsmen as they showed the world who Montana was by setting new records. More than 100 Montana National Guardsmen and women were welcomed home by family and friends after a four-month deployment. This was the airmen's first large-scale deployment since ending a two-and-a-half-year conversion process last October. And then there's a new unit, basically proved and showed them that we know what we're doing, know how to do it, and aircraft's an aircraft, and the Montana National Guard knows how to deploy. During the deployment, guardsmen were assigned to the 386 Air Expeditionary Wing and participated in Operation Inherit Resolve. This deployment was the best deployment I've been on. As far as where we were at, we, we, it was probably the most any one of us had flown at, in that period of time. So. It was really busy, busy deployment. Flight crews delivered supplies and personnel throughout the region to military units fighting ISIS. I told every single one of our workers, everybody around, I said, you should not go home and feel like you didn't do what you went here to do. I mean, we accomplished everything and then some. The mission often required the C-130 crews to operate in dangerous regions, but the crew members say the wing went above and beyond to successfully complete their mission. We set maintenance records. We were able to provide every demand signal for our operations side, uh, delivering record amount of cargo, record amount of personnel, flew a record amount of, of hours, and our maintenance st uh, statistics, uh, the ability for our maintenance folks to provide that resource to our operations uh, was outstanding. These men and women not only broke records, but they set new standards for Operation Inherent Resolve. As Montana, as we go, that's what we do. We try to go and show who we are, what we're made of. So have a chip on our shoulder, go do the job, do the best we can. And this job, you're always learning, and we learned a ton. It's just going to compound for later. I mean, we're just going to keep getting better and better. We are now joined by Colonel Buell Dixon, the commander of the 120th Airlift Wing. Thank you for joining us today, you sir. Bet. With the conversion ending in October of 2016, not, it was very quick that you guys picked up and left right away. What was that kind of like? Well, it happened fast. Uh, our conversion started uh, in March of 14. Uh, we got our first aircraft then. We did our first flight in March uh, or June of 14. Uh, two years later, we uh, take off and deploy and uh, do the mission. So uh, to get ready for that, uh, a lot of things had to take place. Uh, um, from training uh, to fixing the aircraft, to getting the aircraft up to speed, to getting the aircraft in uh, from other units and from the Air Force uh, to Montana Air National Guard and then getting those aircraft ready to go. Uh, for the training wise, uh, air crew training to mechanic training to everything, we had to look at the big picture. We had to look across the whole wing. Uh, if you look back, we retrained about 60% of our airmen into a new mission. We started out in fighters in 1947, stayed through fighters for the whole time and then we moved from uh, Air Combat Man to Air Mobility Command to the C-130. So into the C-130 is a completely different mission, as you can tell, with uh, compared to the fighters that we uh, used to have. So retraining all those people took a, a tremendous amount of time and a lot of effort to get the, to make that happen. While we're doing this, we're also converting the facilities that we had, repurposing the facilities to uh, enable us to work in our new mission. We did a lot of that through uh, the winter months where we didn't have the facilities there to work in with our maintenance crew outside working in the cold weather and that getting the aircraft up to speed so we could deploy uh, in November 17, uh, 16. So that was uh, uh, a challenging time. Uh, Montana uh, picked up the, the reins and, and did what they needed to do. Oh, that's amazing. Now, were the airmen, when they were training, were they here or were they going to different schools across the country? We had uh, 
prior to the aircraft getting here and then uh, a little bit afterwards, they were going into schools around the country uh, and they were also doing on the job training here. So they would get uh, initial training wherever they went and then they would come back and go uh, through upgrade training here to get them ready to deploy. How proud are you when they actually <laughs> did deploy and they came back and they were setting record after record while on deployment? They did a great job over there. Uh, the work ethic of Montana is awesome. Uh, the people in Montana and our, and our airmen, uh, they do a great job. Uh, really second to none. Uh, they get out there and do the job right, and they do it efficiently every time. Uh, really proud of them. And I know um, they were talked about during that deployment story that we just saw that these men kind of showcased really what we could do um, overseas because we were doing more that was than some other units were doing. You bet. Uh, we train, uh, our mission is to be ready. So first of all, we had to go through the initial training to get to those, the point to where we could actually do the mission, changing from fighters to C-130s and changing commands. Uh, then once we got into that, now we are in the readiness uh, to stay ready and viable in the, in the community, in the C-130 community. Uh, and, and we're continuing to stay uh, ready through training uh, and through uh, just everyday uh, grind of, of making it happen. So. And when they go on deployments, these men and women, they leave their families and jobs behind. How grateful that you are that these jobs are allowing them to go. Well, that's, that's a great part. A lot of our, or most of our airmen are right here from the community. So, uh, including myself. So we have people that are in the unit for over 30 years that grew up here, that uh, went to school right here and then uh, got into the Air National Guard. So the community uh, support that we have is incredible here that uh, allows us to do some of these things that uh, uh, we can do for not only for our, our state, uh, but also for our nation. So uh, great, uh, great community we have here to allow us to do that. And then leaving the families behind, how hard is that? Boy, that's tough. Um, you get, you don't know what to expect as a family. You don't expect uh, what your family member, your spouse is doing out there. Uh, so it's hard on the families at home. Sometimes it's harder because the person deployed is taking care of themselves and taking care of the mission and staying busy, where the spouse is at home with either the kids or, or whatever, and they are constantly thinking about what the other one is doing and worrying about them, making sure they're not in harm's way. Uh, so uh, being home is actually uh, sometimes harder. And then when we move forward with this mission, how more hands-on is it than when we had fighter jets before? We are, when we had fighter jets before, we train uh, for a couple events a year, possibly, uh, that we could deploy on. But now we are deploying on a daily basis. Uh, we travel all over the world uh, daily. Uh, we're doing the mission out there, supporting the nation and the state uh, every day. So it's a, it's a constant churn for the wing. Uh, we stay really busy. Uh, and uh, it shows up there, uh, but the pride also shows. This year, the United States Air Force celebrated its 70th birthday and our own Montana Air National Guard celebrated its 70th anniversary, anniversary maintained up with Maelstrom Air Force Base to do an air show called Flight Over the Falls. Accelerating towards the ground at speeds in excess of 120 miles per hour. Now, I'm super, super honored and super blessed to be a part of this air show and celebrating 70 years of, of air pow power over Montana. The Wings of Blue kicked off the show with a parachute demonstration. We're going to be doing uh, a low show at about 6,500 feet. Um, we're going to be displaying the service flags. The group is made up of Air Force officers and cadets currently at the Air Force Academy. And then also being a part of the team, we get to teach the basic parachuting course too. And so we're teaching kids. Uh, on day one, how to jump out of an airplane completely by themselves. Again, they're designed to get these people on the ground quickly. Next up is the United States Navy F-18 Tactical Demonstration Team. They are showcasing the Super Hornet. Monday through Thursday, we uh, trained pilots and whistles on how to fly the Super Hornet. And then Friday through Saturday, uh, we moonlight as the air show pilots. The group trains about 130 to 160 students each year. But to make the team, they must be able to complete a full season. Oh, so we have a total of 12 maneuvers that we'll do. Some of the ones that you definitely want to be uh, on the lookout for is the high speed pass. Uh, so we'll come zorching by the crowd about uh, 700 miles per hour and 200 feet uh, off the deck. And the Thunderbirds round out the day with their performance. To be a Thunderbird, pilots need to have a lot of time in the skies. 
Uh, you need at least to have 750 hours of fighter time. So that can be in any fighter. It doesn't have to be an F-16. could be an A-10, F-22, F-15. The group just returned from performing in France and the United Kingdom. In the business of representing airmen, over 660,000 total force airmen that are deployed, uh, that serve, uh, and over 20,000 of which are deployed around the world. So uh, it's a difficult and humbling mission. This summer, the Montana Air National Guard hosted its first air show with the Maelstrom Air Force Base. How successful was the show this summer? Wow, it was really successful. Um, the things we got to do out there the, uh, is to showcase our unit and show, showcase Maelstrom Air Force Base. Uh, working together, give back to the community. It was a great opportunity for us to give back to the community. Uh, working with Maelstrom and other entities. Uh, we worked with uh, the Sheriff's Department, Police Department, Benefis, uh, uh, Department of Transportation, you know, fire departments uh, around the, uh, the city and, and the state. Uh, so it was a great opportunity for us to all come together and uh, make this a great show for everybody. It, uh, it brought the people up, uh, gave them an opportunity to come in and see what, we're, what we do, uh, a small sliver of what we do on a daily basis, uh, and as well as Malstrom Air Force Base. We did have uh, the, Army Air, or the Army National Guard come up from uh, Helena as well, uh, and we got to showcase some of those things for them uh, and uh, get a little glimpse of what they get to do uh, as well. So that was a great opportunity for us to be out there and working with uh, the different entities. And why is this important to help build your relationship with Maelstrom Air Force Base and joining up and doing a show like this? Well, it's, it's total force. So we're, we're a piece of the puzzle. So uh, working with the, the total force out there with Maelstrom Air Force Base, every time we deploy, every time we go somewhere, uh, I like to think we don't necessarily support them, we enhance their mission. So we, we actually bring a, a benefit uh, to their mission that uh, they can't get somewhere else. Our experience that we have, our air crew experience, our firefighting experience, our security forces experience, the things that we have out there uh, compared to a young air force, a young crowd, uh, our people are a little bit more seasoned. Uh, a lot of times they come from the air force uh, if they're not raised here in Montana. So uh, the the experience that we bring to the total force is uh, a, a big deal and uh, really looked uh, great upon from the, from the Air Force. And then all the different city entities you guys teamed up with, how did it build relationships within the city? Well, within the city, I mean, you're working with uh, the Sheriff's Department, uh, Department of Transportation, Fire Department, Benefits, uh, the local police department, uh, working with 911 Center uh, for anything that could happen during the air show. This allowed us uh, for domestic operations as well. So this was kind of a, used as training as well. Uh, so if we did have something happen uh, in the local community uh, via earthquake or snowstorms or whatever it is, we've already built those uh, connections and those uh, relationships that just add on to uh, the capability of the Montana National Guard. So today you beat Thunderbird Media. Before I could take to the skies, I first had to be fitted for a G-suit and a harness. What it does, it actually applies pressure to your lower extremities to force the blood back up to your head. So usually when you're pulling G's, your blood decides to uh, run from your head down to your feet. G's is short for gravitational force. One G is equal to the force of gravity on Earth. Fighter pilots have to be able to withstand multiple G's when they're performing different maneuvers. When I say, here come the... Time to flex your legs, butt, and stomach and get ready for the G's. And on the G and G's is where I'm going to pull. And it's going to be a smooth 6G pull to basically straight vertical. Lieutenant Colonel Kevin Walsh went through the plan and broke down every maneuver we would be doing before we headed out to the runway. I'm ready. Feel confident that our pilot's going to get us through today. And then after the flight, I'll let you know how I feel then. One last pep talk from Walsh and we were ready to take to the skies. Once we were in the air, we were joined by three other Thunderbirds to do some of the diamond maneuvers. Then we headed out to northeastern Montana to perform solo maneuvers that showcase what the F-16 can do. Aileron roll is just super tight, okay? I'll let you know exactly when it's coming because if you don't, there's potential to hit your head on the side of the canopy. My favorite maneuvers as a flight was the vertical rolls. It's about a 7 to 8G pull to pure vertical, and then once we're established here, you're going to hear me say, and we're rolling to the left. We're just going to corkscrew our way up. After about an hour, we headed back for a tour of Great Falls and landed. We got up to 9.3 Gs, so well done there. After all was said and done, this was an experience of a lifetime. What was your favorite part about this year's air show? You know, I liked the B-52 that came in uh, and did a, a 
pass over the top. That was pretty cool. Uh, to see that uh, big plane uh, fly every time was pretty amazing to me, so I, I thought that was pretty impressive. Also, a lot of the exhibits, uh, some of those pilots out there in the civilian world uh, flying those uh, biplanes and whatnot was pretty cool to see. So I enjoyed that uh, a lot. Uh, but I guess most of all, I got, to, I got to meet a lot of people in the community and, uh, and see how much they enjoyed uh, the uh, air show open house 70th anniversary that we had uh, combined that with for the Air National Guard. So meeting the people and talking to the people, being part of uh, that day or those two days out there with them was uh, a, a great time and really uh, inspirational. Why is it so important to showcase not only your guys' mission, but also the Montana National Guard's mission during an event like this? Well, I, the Montana National Guard, you got the Army National Guard and the Air National Guard here in the state of Montana. And, you know, we all support one team, one fight. So we support each other in everything we do. Uh, so to showcase them and bring them up, and, and not only that, uh, it shows our community a little bit of uh, what we're capable of, just a sliver of what we do every day. So it was uh, great to involve them. It was a great that they could get up here and do that. And then what are your plans for future air shows? Future air shows, uh, what we'd like to do is maybe a minimum of one every five years, but it's going to depend on mission, depend on tasking from uh, the state, tasking from our nation and what we need to do uh, and uh, see what happens with the, with the future, where things are going. So. Uh, we'll play that by ear, but uh, we'd like to try to get a minimum of one every five years. Awesome. So in September, 66 Montana Air National Guardsmen personnel were activated to help fight wildfires across Montana. The Guardsmen went to Fort Harrison to learn about fire suppression detection and prevention skills from instructors with the Department of Natural Resources and Conservation. They also learned about Guardsmen, the Guardsmen also learned about the radio communications, along with how the fires hose and deploy to shelter. For some guardsmen, this is the first time being deployed on the fires. Well, I'm learning a lot. This, yeah. for a lot of us, this is, we're brand new to wildland firefighting. So it's been a um, pretty educational few days learning about uh, fires and all the tactics and all the logistics that are involved with it. So there's a lot of uh, good teaching going on here. The state activation only lasted about two weeks. Now, Montana had one of its worst fire seasons. Why was it important for our guardsmen to get out there and help during these fires? Well, it's important uh, to get out there and uh, deploy out there as quick as possible when we're called upon. So we want to get out there and actually uh, be a part of uh, putting these fires out and uh, uh, saving homes, saving uh, forest and that kind of stuff. Uh, our guardsmen are from all over the state. Some of these homes are their homes. Some of these uh, uh, some of this land is their land out there, so we wanted to get out there and make sure that uh, we're supporting the communities and supporting uh, uh, the state with this. So getting out there and being a part of it to ensure that we're deploying quickly, getting trained properly prior to getting out there uh, with safety in mind at the same time uh, to get us back here uh, safe and sound so we can continue to sustain the fight uh, and sustain future missions uh, every day to ensure that every airman gets back here. So. We went down uh, to Fort Harrison, went through some training down there, uh, and that, al that allowed us to uh, get some equipment, needed equipment, and then give uh, our airmen our basic firefighting skills to either work the line or security detail and that kind of stuff to ensure that our uh, uh, public is safe out there. So um, what kind of other jobs did they do if they weren't on the line? So if they're not on the line uh, working, uh, putting out hot spots uh, or uh, stuff like that, they could end up doing uh, security detail, uh, managing, uh, uh, you know, team leaders, that kind of stuff to manage in uh, groups of uh, uh, line fighters out there. So uh, security t detail there would be a, a We've done that in the past uh, to keep the citizens away from the danger areas, you know, driving up the road, we might need to stop them because the fire's up in that area or whatnot, just to ensure the public is safe. Why is it so important to, for them to go down to Fort Harrison to receive the training before they go out? Well, everything's about safety. If we can't get our airmen back home safe, then we can't supply the next mission that we have to do. So uh, we need to make sure that our airmen stay safe. We need to make sure they understand uh, what fires are capable of doing and how to, how to react when they're caught in a fire, things that they can do to ensure that uh, their lives are not put at danger. Uh, it's important to bring them back and uh, continue on. So the training we get down there, uh, what to do with smoke inhalation, 
or with close to fire, what you do if you're surrounded by fire, what you can do to help survive and that kind of stuff. But overall, uh, try not to get into those positions in the first place. So. Uh, we go through all that training down there, and then we talk about heat exhaustion. We talk about uh, those kind of things that actually affect the personnel, uh, airmen there, and then what they can expect from that. So uh, it's all about uh, safety, bringing our airmen home. Uh, a fire is not worth a life. Uh, so uh, we try to get them back here safe so we can do it another day. So this kind of mission showcases what Montana Guardsmen are all about and coming and helping their own. It, it is. Uh, you know, the volunteerism we had was incredible. Uh, everybody seemed to raise their hand wanting to get out there and do something. This is home. This is a place they grew up. This is a place they uh, uh, raise their family and their, and their kids. So they want to get out there and support the state and do what they can to support the state. So it is a big deal to them. It's a big deal. It makes them feel like uh, they're actually doing something for uh, the home front here at home. So uh, they, they really had a, we had a high rate of volunteerism. Wow, that's amazing. Not only do these guardsmen step forward to help Montanans, but they also go above and beyond to help those affected by natural disasters as well. On no in November, 26 members of the one, two, 26 members of the 219th Red Horse headed to Puerto Rico to help with relief efforts. The heavy construction specialists will operate and maintain a si system similar to disaster relief bed down set up near San Juan. The systems offer shelter and services to emergency responders during natural disasters. We'll do an initial site survey of where we're going to set up our, our disaster relief bed down set or DRBS. From there, uh, we'll set that, start setting that up, get initial capability, and then bed down the personnel that are going to be there and then maintain the, the generators, the water purification unit, the latrine unit, the laundry, uh, and the shave shower units as well. The mission lasted about 30 days. Now, we've had multiple hurricanes come through Texas, Puerto Rico, Florida. What was it like to be able to send your guardsmen down to help in those affected areas? Well, it was great, uh, you know, with us being ready to do that, uh, just out of conversion, ready to go down and uh, help the nation and what they needed help with with these uh, disaster relief. Uh, we did send 26 uh, Red Horse members down there. We sent 28 air crew. We sent four aircraft during the whole time, uh, or during part of the time. Some of the aircraft were out for a couple weeks at a time, making trips back and forth from Puerto Rico to St. Croix to Florida to uh, wherever they needed to go. Uh, our airmen were hauling uh, personnel to equipment, to food, to water, uh, to medevac, uh, and uh, we actually went down and set up uh, some uh, Commo suites down in Florida so when the hurricanes hit that they will be able to continue to communicate. We also sent some security forces out uh, to protect some areas uh, uh, down in the islands uh, for a couple weeks and then uh, we sent some uh, schedulers and whatnot that help schedule all these uh, aircraft in and out of the, the islands and uh, work some of these issues. So we, uh, we sent quite a few people down there uh, and it's still ongoing. Matter of fact, we're just sending more uh, actually tomorrow uh, heading out. So uh, it's a great opportunity for our airmen. And again, uh, just like the state fires, it's helping out our nation. It's helping out uh, uh, our home. Uh, our home. So uh, really means a lot to our people to be able to do that and be ready to do that. And it says a lot about our training as well. To be able to, we train for this just about every day. Well, every day we fly. So to be able to go out there and put our training to good use and to be able to do it for the good of our nation uh, is really satisfying uh, for our airmen. And uh, we, we get a high volunteer rate when it comes to that as well. How impressed are you when these men and women raise their hand and say, I want to go? Well, it's a great opportunity for them. I'm super impressed with them. I'm super impressed with the, the Red Horse team, to security forces, to even our air crew, uh, and to our uh, uh, people at home that support to be able to put these people out there on the line because there's a lot of back support that goes on to getting these people out, the, out there uh, doing the job. So uh, overall for the, for the wing, uh, you look at conversion a little over two years, deploy, come out of deployment, go into air shows, go into a unit inspection that we just went through uh, last week. And then uh, uh, during all that, we're also doing hurricane support, fire support. Uh, uh, Montana Air National Guard is very busy. 
And uh, it's uh, pretty neat to see those guys in action uh, doing it the Montana way. Um, what is your favorite part about being able to see these guys one year after the conversion just go? They keep going and going and going. Yeah, it's, uh, we keep thinking it's going to slow down, but it never seems to slow down. So, uh, and that's okay. Uh, that's what we're here for. That's what we do. Uh, we train every day for this. Uh, we try to maximize our resource, maximize our airman's time, maximize our money, maximize uh, the Air Force and other entities to get the, uh, the most training we can to stay ready and uh, be a, a valuable asset uh, to enhance the Air Force mission. When you guys say you're training, are you training just at home or are you guys training around the world? We train around the world. Uh, we're just getting back from uh, Brazil with a big training down there. We got a plane coming back in the next couple of days. So uh, we are around the world on a daily basis. Uh, and, you know, it really gives our airmen a huge, uh, a vast amount of experience uh, to, to be able to get out there and train with uh, different countries and train uh, doing different things with other countries. Uh, gives them the experience that they can't just get here at home. Uh, we get the base training here, uh, but then we get out there in the world and do the real training uh, to, to integrate uh, to the total force. How does it help build those relationships with, the, with those other countries that these guardsmen are going out and training there? Well, it, it, anytime you train with anybody, even other countries, uh, in-state, Army National Guard, Army, uh, Air Force, anytime you can train with somebody, it builds those relationships. Uh, the more you can work together towards a, s a common goal, uh, the better re your relationship is and the better you understand each other. And uh, one of my top things in the wing is communication and, and how you train together and learn to communicate the, across from Air Force to Army is quite, is quite different uh, from what we normally train with. And, uh, to Marines, to special forces that we drop out of the back or whatever it is, uh, the more we can train with these people, the better, better off we are. Uh, and it, it makes for a stronger force in the nation. So as the Guard moves forward to the future, what do you guys see yourself going? Well, for the Air National Guard, we want to be the premier uh, uh, C-130 base. We want to be uh, second to none in the world, and I think we're uh, really on our way there. I think uh, with what we've done in just a short amount of time, uh, the name we've made for ourselves already, uh, and the, the amount of missions and the ops tempo that we've put out on a daily basis, uh, I think uh, showcases that very well. I think uh, for Montana, uh, I think we do it right. I think uh, we look at uh, things, uh, you know, we have ranchers, we have farmers, we have policemen, we have accountants, we all over from here in Montana. And uh, there just seems to be something about the, the Montana work ethic. How proud are you of these men and women who've accomplished so much in the last year? Well, it's, it's like I said, it's been nonstop. I'm uh, super proud of them. I know uh, our generals are super proud of them. I, I think it shows throughout the, the country that uh, working with the Readiness Center, the National Guard Bureau, AMC, Air Mobility Command, and that uh, constant feedback from these uh, different entities, uh, they're proud of, them, proud of them just as well. So uh, super proud. Uh, I, don't, uh, uh, I don't think there's a better unit out there. Well, thank you so much, Colonel Dixon, for joining us this Face the State. I'm CARE TV's Margaret Tomarco, and thank you for joining us this week as well. Thank you. You've been watching Face the State, a presentation of MTN, the Montana Television Network.